Hey, what's up guys? This is Leo and I'm back today with another um, setup tutorial. This time we are going to be setting up a Next.js front-end project uh, using TypeScript, ESLint Prettier again, and we will also be including Jest and React testing the library. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So to start us off, um, we first need to initialize our Next.js project. And um, the way to do this is by going into the directory that you want to create the project and go just yarn create next app and then just name your app um, whatever you want. So for this one, I will be using next TS front end um, and it will take a little bit. So I'll all right, now that that's done, um, we can open up Visual Studio Code and we can go in and see what that Create Next app has kind of uh, built for us. And to start it off, uh, you can see that it kind of made this package.json with kind of just like some default scripts that we can use to uh, run our um, project, some default React and Next dependencies. Uh, we can see that it created this uh, pages directory. And if you're not familiar with what the pages directory does, um, it pretty much just handles all of the routing for you. So pretty much if I wanted to create, let's say like an about page, all I would have to really do in here is just create about.js, go about creating the page and then um, my app will know to route slash about. So like localhost slash about to this about page. So that's really nice. It just saves you um, a lot of time from having to set up like a React router or something like that. Um, the next directory that it creates for you is public. And if you're not familiar with what public does, this is pretty much just a uh, Nexus directory for sharing static files. Um, so any kind of file that you include in here um, can be accessed anywhere within your program. Um, usually used for just, um, yeah, like I mentioned, um, static files. Um, one thing to note is that you should not ever name a file within public directory with the same name as another file in the pages directory. This will cause an error, so be careful with that. And the last thing that it created for us was just a kind of just a simple styles um, global directory that we can use for our um, template that we've got so far. And a git ignore, so this is just some. Um, classic uh, Next.js ignore things, so like ignore the Next folder that it builds and the out folder and things like that. All right, now that we have the project set up and I've kind of explained a little bit of what each directory does, we can start um, adding our dependencies. Um, so for the first thing I like to do with front end projects is I do like to add um, an ax, a dev dependency on this library called Axe Core. Um, and if you're not familiar with what Axe Core does, it's pretty much just an accessibility test engine. Um, and if you're not familiar with what accessibility is, it pretty much just makes your website more easily accessible to people with disabilities. So it's really nice for um, your front end projects because your Lighthouse score does kind of get impacted by um, how accessible your website is to people with disabilities. And all you gotta do is just yarn add um, capital D, X core, so then there you go, you'll have that as a dev dependency. All right, and now that we're ready to start configuring TypeScript, we just need to install some of the dependencies for it to work correctly, and this being the TypeScript library, uh, TS node, types node, types react, types react DOM. Um, this will allow us to use TypeScript with our Next.js application, and once that's all installed, we can go ahead and create um, the TS config file. And if this all seems very familiar, it's because it's very similar to my setup backend project, but um, we're just gonna do things a little bit differently in this video. We're just gonna go ahead and just finalize the TS config file right away. And so I'm just going to copy that and paste that here. Um, I'm going to kind of show a little bit. So if you guys want to pause and kind of go along, this will also be in um, the final GitHub. So if you don't want to, go through and have to write all these hand by hand, you can just go through it into the GitHub repo and just copy it from there. Um, so yeah, just a, a couple of quick little differences is that we are targeting ES5. Um, that being, since this is a front end project, we do need to uh, make sure that our project compiles down to uh, browser old browser compatibilities. Um, and then the rest is just a couple of pretty straightforward things. So like preserve JSX, 
create some paths for absolute paths that we will um, add later. Make sure to include these files in our build, exclude these files in our build. Um, and yeah, so that kind of just finalizes the um, TypeScript configuration right away. And with that configured, we can start configuring ESLint. And so if you don't have the plugin already installed, what you can do is go to the VS Code plugin section and find uh, this ESLint plugin by Dirk, install that. And once you've installed that, what we're going to do is we're going to add the ESLint library as a dev dependency um, so that we can actually uh, work with ESLint. And then after um, installing that dependency, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize uh, the ESLint um, file. And this does look a little small, so let me zoom in. Um, so what we're gonna do for our options is we are going to use this to check syntax, find problems, and enforce code style. We're gonna use uh, JavaScript um, import-export, React. Of course, it uses TypeScript. Um, since this is a Next.js project, we will be using both browser and Node since you can do that with Next.js. Um, we're gonna use a popular style guide, again, Airbnb, JavaScript, and um, say yes to install all of these dev dependencies. All right, now that that's finished installing all of those um, dev dependencies, um, first thing we need to do, if you are using Yarn, you need to go back in and for some reason, um, the npx eslint command will use npm even if you are using Yarn, so let's delete that package lock JSON. And um, let's go over what the configuration is just really quick. So you can see, we just have created this environment for us where we have Node ES 2021 browser, just uh, the React plugin recommended, Airbnb, um, use the TypeScript parser. We will be using JSX with uh, version 12 and also just use the React and the TypeScript ESLint. And we will be changing this, um, but this is just kind of a quick overview of what that's doing. And next thing we should do is let's just quickly add, um, not yarn, um, just add a ESLint ignore file. This is just so that um, we're not trying to uh, lint any kind of files that don't really need to be linted. For example, we don't really care about uh, the next folder being linted, known modules being linted. Um, and then later, for later on, because I always forget to kind of do this, I will be adding coverage, which is just our test files that we will be adding um, later on in the video. And so yeah, so we are done with the initial setup of ESLint. And what we can do next is we can start setting up prettier. So same thing with ESLint. If you go into the uh, marketplace, you can look for the prettier plugin and you will see this code formatter right here. So um, prettier by prettier, make sure you install that. Once you install that, you can just do the same thing with as ESLint. Let's install prettier as a dev dependency. This will install the library so that it can be used. And what we're gonna do while that is initializing, is that is taking a little while. Um, we're going to just create a dot prettier RC file. So this will just be our prettier um, configuration file that we can kind of specify what options we want prettier to run with. And the options that I kind of like to run it with are these right here. I do enjoy um, tab width of two, print width of 120. That can be changed depending on your preference. Um, do use single quotes, trailing comma, ES5, and always put a semicolon. And so that it should be all you really need to get prettier configured. So we can go back now and we can look at finishing up the ESLint configuration. So one, the first thing we gotta do to finish up uh, setting up the ESLint with Prettier is that we do need to add some dev dependencies for the Prettier plugin as well as the Prettier config. These will just allow um, ESLint and Prettier to play nice with each other. And then the next thing we're going to do is we do need to modify our ESLint um, configuration file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, oh, that is for sure not what I was trying to do. Let's copy that from my um, notes here and just extend a couple of different plugins that we are going to be using. So these plugins are pretty much uh, just a quick overview. We're gonna be using the TypeScript ESLint recommended, the React recommended. Um, if you like using React hooks, we are gonna be uh, importing the configuration for the React hooks recommended. Airbnb, the prettier recommended, the import um, 
plugins for errors, warnings, and TypeScript, as well as the JSX Ally. For this is for our um, accessibility rules. So this will give us some warnings and errors when our accessibility is off. And um, next thing we're going to change is that since we've changed the extends, we're also going to change the plugins to be, um, in order for these uh, configurations to work, we do need to um, also define some of the plugins. And these are just going to be React, React Hooks, TypeScript, ESLint, Prettier, Import, and JSX Ally. And then the last thing that we need to change is we're going to add some basic rules for now. And that being, we're just going to add the Prettier rules, throw an error, um, the React and JS app scope, I like turning that off. Um, I don't also like the file name extension, turn that off and um, also turn off the import extensions. So that's just some of the things I like to use. You could play around with the, the different rules that you'd like. And the next thing we got to do is let's test it out and make sure everything is working correctly. And by that, we are going to start changing around some of the default files that they gave us to TypeScript. So yeah, let's start changing uh, some of these uh, classic JavaScript files to be uh, TypeScript, just so that we can make sure that everything is working correctly. So first file I'm gonna change is this app.js, and I'm going to change it to uh, just a quick TSX file, and I'm gonna import um, from my notes um, the TypeScript version of the file. I'm going to also change the index.js and I'm going to modify it to um, TSX as well as get rid of that and import the, um, the TypeScript version of it. And then the last file I'm going to change is the API route of hello.js and I'm going to change that to a TypeScript file and same thing, modify it to the TypeScript version of it. And um, sorry that I'm copying and pasting this kind of stuff. I don't really wanna go through and waste our time seeing me, uh, first of all, probably type everything incorrectly because I got a new keyboard. So sometimes I've been just fat fingering everything. All right, now that we've changed all of our JavaScript files to TypeScript, the last thing I like to do is add um, absolute imports. Well, that will allow us to do, as you can see right now, is we're using these uh, relative paths in order to import. And so with absolute paths, what we could do is instead of having it like this, we could just have um, something kind of like this, where we can just use an alias in order to reference our directory, um, direct, directory directly. And the, in order for us to get this to work, we need to add one more dev dependency of ESLint import resolver for TypeScript. And after we add that, we can finally finalize our ESLint um, configuration file. And so the new things that I'm adding on here, so it does look a little bit different, is all of the extensions and the plugins and everything is still the same, but I am adding some new rules. And these rules are the import no unresolved error. And then also I do like to add kind of like an import order rule. And so if you're unfamiliar with what this does is it will throw an error whenever uh, your imports are not in a certain order. And then I'm pretty sure that Prettier will auto format them to be in the order that you specify. So the order that I'm using here is just uh, first built in, then external, internal, parent, sibling, object, index. And since we are using React, I do put React as part of the external. And that'll just make sure that your React imports are at the top of your import list. Um, make sure that it is alphabetized so that if you do kind of do chaining imports, they are in alphabetical order. And then we don't need new lines because that just takes up space. And then the last two settings that we have are in order for the absolute imports to work, we do need to specify this import resolver um, for the TypeScript project and just specify that the project, the tsconfig file is just in the root directory that we're currently in. And um, just to detect the version of React so that the ESLint plugin for React can figure out which configuration to use. And so yeah, if we have configured this ESLint file correctly, if we go to back to our app.tsx page, we can finally see that the alias for absolute imports is working. And so with that, we have finished pretty much the base setup of this Next.js project with TypeScript, ESLint, and Prettier. 
And in the next video, I will be going over adding debugging, Jest, the testing framework, as well as React test library. So thanks so much for watching and please leave a like or a comment if you have any feedback or if you would want to see something else. I greatly appreciate any kind of feedback that I get from you guys and thanks again.